The top stories tonight and why news. The Philippines officially kicked off the COVID-19 vaccination of essential workers in areas that frequently experience case surges. Yeah. Hog Racers Group claims there is still price manipulation of pork in markets despite the government's efforts to respond to the supply crisis. The Philippine National Police orders a manhunt against suspected NPA members culpable for the death of Far Eastern University football player Keith Absalon. And UNTV's A Song of Praise Music Festival goes international. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Edsa Cubao, Quezon City. Today is Monday, June 7, 2021. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I am Harleen Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I'm Angelo Castro III. First in the news, the Department of Health has advised that local government units and companies should observe age stratification in the vaccination of the A4 sector or the economic frontliners. JP Nunez will tell us why live. So, JP, what is the age priority for the government's vaccination program and why do LGUs and companies need to follow it? Yes, Harleen, considering that the Philippines still has a limited supply of vaccines, the Department of Health says the older group must be prioritized first in the vaccination of the A4 sector. Under the DOH Memorandum 2021-0259, priority may be given to eligible A4 members within 49 to 59 or 40 to 59 years old than to those 18 to 39 years old. Pwede po unahin muna yung 40 to 59 years of age para kasi na malinaw na malinaw po yan sa mga malawakan, malaliman pag-aaral na yung po habang uh, tumatanda na mga grupo uh, ng mga atin prioritization, sila pa yung talaga na apektuhan ng COVID. The symbolic vaccination today included A4 workers from the NCR plus 8 areas, which are the National Capital Region, Rizal, Cavite, Bulacan, Pampanga, Laguna, Batangas, Metro Cebu, and Metro Davao. Around 50 individuals pr from various sectors, including education, tourism, transportation, mass media, service, and business process outsourcing industry, received their first dose of the vaccine in Pasay City. The Manila City government, meanwhile, will start vaccinating A4 priority group tomorrow. A total of 3,000 doses of vaccines will be administered in four vaccination areas. With the expanding vaccination drive, the Department of Trade and Industry hopes to bring down national joblessness figures. Hopefully, itong vaccination, sabi nga natin, magtutuloy-tuloy na yung reopening ng walang alinlangan at wala pong surge. As of Sunday, the National Task Force Against COVID-19 reported that 5,965,651 doses have already been administered in the country. Of this figure, 4,421,319 are first doses and 1,544,332 are second doses. Harleen, the average daily number of administered, administered doses in the last seven days is 112,621. Among the more than 900 active reporting vaccination sites. That is our live. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, J.P. Nunez, for those updates on the Philippines' vaccination against COVID-19. With more and more Filipinos getting inoculated against COVID-19, the Philippine government now plans to implement new health protocols for vaccinated individuals. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. 
Less than 6 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered in the country, while over 1 million Filipinos have already been fully inoculated. To encourage more people to get vaccinated, especially the senior citizens and people with comorbidities, the government is eyeing to impose less strict protocols for vaccinated individuals. The Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 will study new protocols on this. According to Vaccine SAR and National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer Secretary Carlito Galvez, in other countries such as the United States of America and Israel, restrictions have been eased for fully vaccinated individuals. Sa ngayon, uh, nakikita natin na uh, uh, sa IATF, uh, we are considering na bigyan ng, uh, ng some, some sort of uh, uh, opening up restrictions to those people that uh, will be vaccinated. Especially uh, yung quarantine uh, protocols natin when they uh, no, return uh, from abroad. Ang uh, pakay po natin sa bandang huli ay talagang mas magkaroon po ng increased mobility ang mga tao po mga nakakumpleto na ng kanilang uh, mga bakuna. Last week, the Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 shortened the mandatory facility-based quarantine for Filipinos fully vaccinated in the country and arriving in the country to just seven days. Secretary Harry Roque said the government cannot still impose new protocols for vaccinated individuals abroad because there's no international agreement yet on vaccination certificate. Ang problema po kasi, wala pa po tayong kasunduan sa buong daigdig kung paano natin mabe-verify yung authenticity ng mga vaccination card sa buong daigdig. Ang personal kong pananaw bilang isang nagturo po ng international law sa UP ng labing limang taon, baka kinakailangan magkaroon ng isang international na kasunduan kung dapat magkaroon ng standard na vaccination certificates. Nang sa ganun, hindi po problema ang pag-authenticate kung totoo ba o peke yung vaccination card. Meanwhile, according to Secretary Galvez, some experts from Israel will visit the country on June 20 to share their technical expertise on their successful mass vaccination program. Israel is one of those countries with high vaccination rate and has already fully reopened their economy. Rosa Likoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Quezon City government urged the investigation of yet another super spreader event in Barangay Old Balara. More than 70 individuals who attended the said occasion tested positive for COVID-19. Marvin Callas will give us the details live. Marvin, what is the reason of the barangay captain over the incident and uh, did he really approve the event? Yes, Herlene, Old Balara Barangay Chairman Alan Franza had submitted his response to the show cause order issued by the government or by the uh, Quezon City government in connection with the wedding celebration transpired within his jurisdiction that eventually caused a super spreader event. Following 72 residents who attended the event were tested positive for COVID-19. The chairman narrates that although he was informed that there will be a wedding celebration within the area, no permission was granted by his office. Nung pumunta sila rito ay hindi po natin binigyan ng pahintulot kasi may umiiral nga po na patakaran na bawal po yung uh, uh, gathering. No? Then uh, after that, hindi na sila bumalik. So inaakala ko hindi, nila, hindi na matutuloy dahil hindi nga po natin uh, pinayagan. Then nung May 15, uh, pumunta sila dun sa Purok Leader at uh, nagsabi sila ron uh, na magkakainan nga po sila ron. The Homeowners Association president responsible in the compound, on the other hand, had presumed that the barangay chairman was, or had the, the barangay chairman have approved the undertaking of the said event. Yes, uh, kasi humingi nga sa akin ng permiso yun, sabi ko sa kanila, papayag tayo kung tayo ay uh, bibigyan ng paintulot ng barangay. Uh, ngayon, yung organizer naman, sinabi niya sa akin, o kinalaw sila ng kanilang uh, porok leader, may porok leader. So, oh, uh, nahuli na, namalaman ko na hindi pala uh, yun ay uh, naaprobaan. The area where the gathering happened is currently on lockdown until Wednesday, June 9. 
Meanwhile, a violation of Republic Act Number no. 11332 or the Law on Communicable Diseases were filed against the couple who organized the super spreader led gathering. One of the possible causes of COVID 19 infection in the area was the couple's driver involved in a drinking session dated May 9, where one of his peers was positive for the virus. Ang pinagmulan doon sa ayon sa amin pagtatanong eh yung caregiver na humalo doon sa inuman na from Cavite na, na, na may ba, may kamag-anak diyan sa lugar na yan. Then from inuman nung May 15 naman nakasalan, meron doon na uh, nag-drive doon sa bride na driver na hindi niya alam na infected pala siya. Positive. So, nahawa yung bribe. Chairman France assured the continuous implementation of all necessary restrictions to avoid the same event to happen. The Department of Health yet again reiterated the strict prohibition of any celebration to avoid the increase of COVID-19 cases in the country. Tinatawagan po ang lahat ng ating local governments na mas pag-igtingin ang kanilang pagpapatupad ng minimum public health standards sa lahat ng kanilang nasasakupan mula sa pagtigil ng mga malalaking pagtitipon hanggang sa pagpapatupad ng mask wearing and face shield, physical distancing at saka oras ng curfew. That's your latest live. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Marvin Calas, reporting live. President Rodrigo Duterte continues to remind Filipinos to observe health protocols even if fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Meanwhile, the government targets to administer half a million doses of COVID-19 vaccines per day starting next month. Rosalie Cos explains why. President Rodrigo Duterte marks the symbolic vaccination of those included in the Priority Group A4 or Economic Frontliners today, a major milestone in the country's battle against the pandemic. This as the government intensifies its mass inoculation. However, the chief executive appeals to the public to continue observing health protocols even when vaccinated. To my dear Kababayans, let us keep in mind that vaccination is the only way forward for us to overcome this pandemic. But we must also remember that getting vaccinated is not the only solution. We must continue to observe minimum public health standards by wearing a mask, washing our hands, and observing social distancing. The president says because of the aggressive efforts of the government to secure vaccine doses from several vaccine makers, the Philippines now started receiving bulk of supplies. We can now see the light at the end of the tunnel as the vaccine shipments have arrived, have started to arrive in bulk. This development is the result of our national government's aggressive efforts to secure sufficient doses from the different manufacturers. Meanwhile, the government is eyeing to vaccinate up to half a million Filipinos per day in July. This as the vaccine supplies in the country continue to increase. Vaccine Sorry National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer Secretary Carlito Galvez says for this month, the country is set to receive more than 10 million doses of vaccines. This includes 5.5 million doses of Sinovac, 4.3 million doses of Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccines from COVAX facility, 100,000 doses of Sputnik V vaccines, and 250,000 doses of Moderna. Yung po ang inaasahan natin na sa pagbubukas ng A4 and later A5, uh, marami na po tayong mabakunahan at uh, in-expect po namin na talagang ma-bridge natin yung ating uh, expectation by, the, by coming July na meron tayong uh, more or less 400 to 500 uh, jobs per day and then later a uh, fourth quarter, 740 jobs per day. Rosalicos, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, Hog Racer and Consumers Group expressed deep concern over the prices of pork in the market. 
The group says with the, gov with the government's action to address the pork supply crisis, prices in the market should be lower. Ray Pelayo explains to us why live. Uh, yes, Ray, why are prices of pork still high in some markets? The Poha Grazers Group Pro, Pro Pork believes that uh, there is a manipulation in the prices of pork in some markets as uh, prices still remain high. The group says uh, they have reduced the farm gate price of hogs to 220 pesos per kilogram from its peak of 250 pesos this year earlier. Based on the estimate, the retail price of pork now in the market should only be at uh, 360 pesos per kilogram or lower. Laban Consumer Group is urging the government to set a price ceiling or suggested retail price of pork. Sa inside ng mga subdivision, nasa or at 10 for 20, last weekend for 20 pa yung binili kong liyempo. Based on the monitoring of the Department of Agriculture from March to May this year, there is already a decrease of 20 pesos per kilogram on pork prices. The DA said that aside from the continuous arrival of supply from this size in Mindanao, more and more imported pork is now reaching the markets. Definitely, bottom line is the supply of our is more uh, than ngayon kasi alam naman po natin na pag maganda ang ating supply, yung presyo po ng ating baboy and mas maganda din po. Based on the data from the Bureau of Animal uh, Industry, the African Swine Fever or uh, ASF is only confined in two regions. The indemnity payment for uh, racers affected by the ASF has also reached to 1.5 billion pesos. Diego? Thank you, Ray Pelayo, reporting live. For those watching our 24-7 live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The Philippine National Police has launched a manhunt against members of the New People's Army allegedly responsible for the death of a student athlete from the Far Eastern University in a bombing in Masbate last Sunday. Lea Ilagan reports. Philippine National Police Chief Police General Guillermo Eleazar ordered the local police in Masbate City to enhance their visibility. This after alleged members of the New People's Army or NPA planted an anti-personal landmine in Barangay Anas, Masbate City on Sunday. The incident killed 21-year-old FEU Tamaraos football player Kit Absalon and his cousin while riding in a bicycle. Absalon's 16-year-old nephew, Chris Bean, survived the incident and is being treated at the local hospital. The PNP chief said pursuit operations are now ongoing. Eliazar also condoled with the family of the victims as he vowed to bring to justice the perpetrators. Meanwhile, the Philippine Football Federation has also offered their condolences to the family and said they will provide financial assistance. The Absalon family demanded justice for Kit and his cousin Alvin. Leia Ilagan, UNTV news and rescue we serve the people we give glory to god a former lawmaker claims that the saragibo tandem is seemingly is seemingly on advanced stage in preparation for the 2022 election meanwhile senate president vicente soto iii says he and another senator are seriously contemplating a bid in the national polls harleen delgado will tell us why the recent visit of former Defense Chief Gilbert Gimbot Yodoro to Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio has fueled speculations of a possible tandem in the upcoming polls. The one who set up the meeting, former Camarines Sur Representative Rolando Adaya Jr., told UNTV News that the preparations for the Sara Gibo tandem is underway. He says they are now planning on promoting the two across the country. Money is not a problem. Uh, financing 
is not a problem. It's already there. It was already fixed before we landed uh, in Manila, coming from Davao. So everything is set. What we are talking about now in the inner circles is how both of them will promote their tandem nationwide. We're at that stage already. The former lawmaker adds Duterte Carpio and Teodoro will run as independent and will not seek an endorsement from any political party. Andaya describes the two as the gold standard for the presidential and vice presidential race. When I looked at both of them, I was watching them intently when they were conversing with each other. Kinikilig ako eh. Para ako nanonood ng uh, pelikula na box office. And I'm sure when people get to see them together, they'll get the same feeling. Sarah Gibot and them, God's choice. The UN TV News tried to get an interview with Teodoro, but he declined for now. Duterte Carpio has yet to confirm her bid for the 2022 elections. Meanwhile, Senate President Vicente Soto III says he will be the running mate of Senator Panfilo Lacson should the latter decides to run for president. According to Soto, they are seriously contemplating about running, noting that some groups from various sectors have approached him and Senator Lacson. Earlier, the Senate leader said he is open to run for vice president in the upcoming elections. He adds he is not in the habit of saying that he will not run and then suddenly shows up to file for candidacy. The filing of certificate of candidacy is set in October, just four months from now. Meanwhile, for the palace, President Duterte has yet to decide whether or not to run for vice president in the 2022 polls. In the first place, he was nominated. At ang sagot ko lang naman dyan, siyempre, kailangan sagutin yung nominasyon, kaya pinag-iisipan. Pero wala pa pong desisyon ng presidente. Jorge Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Political analysts believe that the opposition group will need one strong candidate in the presidential race to have a ticket in the national elections. However, the ruling party of President Rodrigo Duterte remains favorable to many Filipinos. Nel Marie Bujo will tell us why. Some personalities have started to surface as aspirants in the coming 2022 national elections, according to University of Santo Tomas political science professor Dennis Coronacion. The opposition group should also start to make noise and push for only one strong candidate who will face the administration party in the presidential race. So, if you have an opposition, you can give you Political analyst Ramon Casiple shares the opinion with Coronacion as he emphasized the importance of two-way fight in the elections. Ngayon, kung sino ang matatakbo, dapat mag-usap yan. At uh, kung uh, mabigat ang uh, agawan sa boto, eh, kailangan magkaisa sila na isa lang. Unfortunately, according to Coronacion, there's no clear cut yet who is indeed the opposition group in the coming elections, whether it's the Isambayan Opposition Coalition or the Liberal Party. There are some names who allegedly have plans to run in the highest position in the government, like the tandem of Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte and President Rodrigo Duterte, or Mayor Duterte and Gilbert Gibo Teodoro, Mayor Isko Moreno and Senator Grace Poe, Senator Panfilo Lacson and Senate President Vicente Soto III. But according to Casiple, this tandem cannot be considered as done deal. Meron din dito ang nangyayari sa PDP Laban. Mm-hmm. Eh, merong sinisingit si Presidente maging Vice President. Mm-hmm. Pero ang tawag ko dyan eh, mga maniobra pa lang yan. Mm-hmm. Nag-uusap yung mga yan, pero hindi lang sila sabi pa. Wala, malawang, wala pa silang agreement. Both Casiple and Coronacion believes the political party of President Duterte has the advantage to the coming elections. This is due to the unchanging popularity of President Duterte to the Filipino people. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God.
Officials are warning the public to be cautious against lotteries or surveys from unsolicited and unofficial individuals and phony companies when using social media and other online platforms. Dante Amento tells us why. It is a scam and fraud. Toyota car and motor companies in the Philippines and abroad deny messages circulating on social media about a Toyota car giveaway as part of their 80th anniversary celebration. Participants are asked to visit a webpage and to input some personal details. The company stresses everything in the page is fake and not official. The Consumer Council of Fiji, an international agency for the rights and interest of consumers, says the web page contains fake comments which appear to be positive to entice more participants to join. Thus, the Office of the Court Administrator of the Supreme Court strongly warns the public to be cautious such active phishing campaign from pretending well-known companies. The OCA advises not to engage and provide personal information Meanwhile, in order not to become a victim of hackers and cyber criminals, an expert advises netizens to verify first if the promos are official from the company's website. Sinasabi nila na nalo ka for a specific promo nila, you can check their websites and official um, social media accounts kung meron ba talaga existing na promo na namatakbo ng time na yon. Do a research if there are no complaints about the promos or programs and most of all, do not give sensitive details such as bank accounts. So yun po, iwasan po natin na magbigay ng mga um, sobrang detailed na personal information kasi hindi naman po kailangan yan. Um, kasama na po dyan yung credit card numbers, credit card, yung lalo po yung nasa likodan kasi iba pinipicture ang panila eh. Pap Ihingi niyo sila, picturean mo yung harapan ng card mo, tsaka yung likod. Huwag niyo pong gagawin yun. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A former Supreme Court justice says that the 2016 arbitral award could still be enforced by the Philippine government in the West Philippine Sea without causing any further conflict in the region. Nel Maribohok reports why. Retired Supreme Court Associate Justice Francis Ardalesa sent a letter to President Rodrigo Duterte to reconsider the proposed amendments to the Republic Act No. 9522, the current Baselines Law of the Philippines. The Baselines Law serve as basis for a country's maritime jurisdiction and a means to establish maritime boundaries with neighboring states. In Hardalesa's letter to President Duterte, he proposed to specifically name and identify the maritime features in the West Philippine Sea claimed or occupied by the country. These include the Abad Santos Shoal, Aguinaldo Reef, Alicia Ani Reef, Allison Reef, Amboyna Cay, Antonio Luna Reef, Bajo de Masinloc, and others. According to the retired justice, this is somehow a way to enforce the 2016 Arbitral Award. This bill is the most inexpensive and yet the most effective means of enforcing the arbitral award and strengthening our territorial and maritime rights in the West Philippine Sea. He is hoping that President Duterte will support his proposal before his term ends next year. Sa pananaw namin, kailangan siguro may specific uh, certified bill din na magagaling sa Pangulo ba bago naman matapos ang kanyang termino. Now, hindi namin sinasabi na ito lang ang paraan. Retired Justice Hardalesa is the one who prepared and filed the arbitration case against China in 2013 when he was the Solicitor General under the Aquino administration. Malakanyang has yet to comment on the said proposal. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God.